This is an IBM uh, System X3650 server, uh, which uh, Morton of My Playhouse uh, kindly donated to me in the middle of the night as I was going away. Uh, I didn't have much of a chance to actually look at the device prior to uh, saying yes of course and leaving, so I figured we'd do that now. So, the little I know about this machine, I've booted it up once, I know that uh, uh, it will start, it will power up, it will run its fans quite loudly, and uh, we'll give you a picture. Uh, it currently has a single, I believe, dual core, super dog slow, 65 nanometer core 2 duo based Xeon processor. Uh, I think it's called like the X5310 or something. Uh, 2 gigahertz, just bottom of the range, super cheap, uh, as well as 2 gigabytes of RAM. It is a proper server, and uh, I do have some parts for servers lying around. Uh, Morton was kind enough to supply me with an additional 6 gigabytes of RAM for it, so we're going to try and put that in. Uh, but I also have a couple of these uh, uh, Xeon E5405 processors. Now, these are also dog slow, I believe at 2 or 2.5 gigahertz, but they are quad cores and they are 45 nanometers. So, it's going to be a bit of an experiment. I've done zero research on this server. I have no idea if 45 nanometer CPUs are officially supported, but I figured we'd just uh, try and put one in there and see if it boots. Even if it might give a bit of a microcode error or something like that, it boot, it might perform quite a bit better than a bloody 65 nanometer dual core. So let's just. Uh, Start by firing this thing up just for shits and giggles so you can hear the noise it makes. Mind you, this is with one of the power supplies. The server also is equipped with uh, two 15,000 RPM SAS drives. Uh, it supposedly also takes SATA drives and I've got a couple of extra hard drive caddies for it. So it might not be entirely useless, and the fact that it's a 2 year rack in size, or is it even free? Uh, you can actually shove 6 discs in it, so it could be a pretty useful device if we uh, get it running with perhaps a bit more modern processor. I don't know the drives are running up, we're getting some picture on the screen off frame. And we're drawing 200 watts! <laughs> oh wow, that's a power hog! Yeah, it really does say 200 watts on there. Wow. But as you can see, it does power up, it does uh, try to boot it. Uh, quite obviously, it doesn't have an OS pre installed, it's just probably wiped entirely empty. Raid controller booting up, and now it's just going to try and network boot, which it's obviously not going to be able to do since I don't have any PXE server set up. So, in lack of that, let's just uh, take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside because it is quite an impressive beast. I do like the way these come apart because you just have this one single handle which pops up and releases the top cover and that is some major fanage going on. So we have no less than two, four, six, eight, ten redundant fans cooling everything, plus at least two, probably four or six more in the power supply. Uh, so we just have one CPU installed, uh, don't even have a heatsink for the second one, but we can try and swap that out. I'm not certain if we need some extra power supply stuff to get the second CPU running there, because we have a slot here which I think might be labelled power. Uh, but we'll find out. Still, I don't have a heatsink for it, so yeah, it's not going to be running for very long. I do want to demonstrate the fan failsafe mode on this server though, because it's quite impressive. If we just rip one of these out... We're now in failsafe, and the power consumption has increased from 200 watts to 245. So that's an additional 40 watts just going into the fans. 250 if we put that one in. Ah, my ears. So let's just uh, try and take this thing a bit more apart. I haven't seen the RAM yet, I've never looked underneath this cover, so 
uh, we're going to stop by just putting some more memory in. Rav Vacuums PCB with a couple of PCI Express slots. And we'll still have no RAM. Oh, I can see it. There we go. That's our RAM. So, what do we have? We have uh, mismatched modules. Three of them, though. So, if I can do 2 times 256 in a gig, yeah, 512. And that's going to be another 512. And then this is. Oh no, wow, this thing takes a lot of RAM. But all 512s. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, this is pretty ancient. Uh, 512 megabytes, PC 5300F. Uh, I'm not sure if this is ECC, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's ECC. We have a giant BGA chip inside of there, so. It's at least it's proper server RAM. Well, these modules are going out, these are going in. I have no idea what the correct order of installing RAM into this thing might be. I'll just put them in one big row. I haven't read the manual. So that's six gigs. Let's just uh, ah, let's just put all of it in. Uh, I wonder if it's even going to boot mismatched modules just in random slots. I'm sure there was some reasoning behind why Morton had installed the RAM in the particular slots he did. There we go. And it seems we have a remote management module installed. That's nice. So, I think it's going to boot just fine even without this thing installed. It's just a passive riser. So, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, there we go. System X. One Xeon 5130 at 2GHz, one processor package. 2GB of installed RAM, okay. <laughs> So, it's not happy with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> DIM pair 1 is not matching or missing. DIM pair, oh, wow, so many pairs are missing. Right, so let's, let's fix that. Ah, oh, and there we go. We actually have some instructions if I'd bother to actually look at the device. So, let's follow those installation instructions and see if we can get some more RAM. Alright, I think I got this sorted. We should be having no more memory issues. Uh, the reason I was screwing up earlier was because I thought Morton had given me all one gigabyte modules, but the cheap bastard gave me a bunch of one, uh, 512 megabyte ones as well. <laughs> now it's not throwing mismatch errors anymore, but it seems Dimper 1 is faulty. Ugh. Amusingly, Dimpe 1 is the 1 gigabyte set, so we're losing 2 gigabytes of this, doesn't work. And uh, nope, I've tried pretty much everything now, I've moved stuff around, I've cleaned the slots, I've tried all kinds of stuff, and I can just arrive to one conclusion, and that's that Martin is an absolute cheapskate, and he sent me broken RAM. But 1 gigabyte modules, at least one of them is just failed because they will not pass the RAM test and they will not be utilized by the server. So, uh, thank you Martin. Now I've got 5 gigabytes of RAM in a million modules. Oh man. Alright, but the interesting part is going to be trying if this thing will run. So, we're limited to not 5 but 4 gigabytes of RAM uh, over 8 modules. So, that's just silly. Uh, but perhaps we can at least uh, go from a 65 nanometer dual core to a 45 nanometer quad core in this thing. So let's just give it a shot. I have my doubts these servers tend not to be too liberal when it comes to swapping processes around for unknown technologies. I'll give it a go. I would not be surprised if we do get a boot, but uh, I think it's not going to be too happy about it. Screw thermal paste. And I think that might be a no. Doesn't even respond to the power button at all. Yeah, if I put my finger on that. It never even turned on the power to the processor. So, 
<sighs> Back to 65 nanometers we go. Bummer. This thing is running a quite recent BIOS as well from 2009, so that's well within the 45 nanometer era. So I'm just waging that this thing just a chipset which just doesn't support 45 nanometer processors at all. Shame. Yeah, so figuring that out combined with the 200 watt idle power usage. I don't think I'm going to be putting this thing into any kind of service, I'm afraid. Uh, it just, it's too slow. The process I got with it scores a whooping 1300 points in a CPU benchmark. And uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM in some very, very inefficient 667 megahertz modules is, well, Quite frankly, half of the speed and half the RAM of my current home server. So that is a bit of a shame. I really am not sure what to do with this thing. I mean, it's a very competent server. It's in working order. Perhaps I'll just end up giving it away to some someone who needs something to experiment with. Just looking at the machine otherwise, though, it is really built in excellent standard. You can really feel the quality of the PCB. It's thoroughly sturdy, it's probably one of those extra thick ones and everything's nicely integrated, you, it's not going to show up on camera but all the heat sinks are properly adhered to the, to, to the devices that are cooling the probably north bridge has a proper heat spreader on it and it just looks like a great machine we do have uh, down there though a little electrolytic cap but eh, it's not bulging so I'd wager it's still going to be in prime shape. And it's a Nichicon PW cap, so it's going to be rated for 5 to 10 thousand hours. I do like this little management board though. It really is a quite integrated solution with its own little power PC process and what seems to be some kind of programming interface. It's not externally accessible, there's just a, a couple of ventilation holes behind it, so this is obviously just for probably factory configuration use or something. That's real nifty. I haven't read too much into this since I'm not a server guy, but this probably provides it with some offline management stuff like turning it on or accessing the BIOS over the network, which is always a welcome feature in a server. And of course we have redundant power supplies. Let's give them a check. That's a tiny form factor. Artists in brand, they make excellent quality paint supplies from what I've seen. If we we'll have a look inside, it's got Rubicon caps. On the secondary, this is going to be an absolute top quality power supply. Rated 12.1 volts, 69 amps. <laughs> and 5 volts, 200 milliamps. So that is mm, about 750 watts, something of that order. Not bad. Perhaps I can find some use for these, although they seem to have some kind of data power, data communication protocol, since you can actually get a serial number out of them in the BIOS, so uh, turning one of these guys on could be a bit of an issue. But yeah, <laughs> almost 70 amps worth. That could be quite handy. I really do like the air guide system though. I have gone to the effort of making it double thick. This is actually two layers of plastic case with a bit of a vacuum cleaner intake here just to give a bit of extra cooling to these rearmost dims. And that's just beautiful attention to detail. And how well is the nine year old CMOS battery doing? Yeah. Well, that's going to need replacing. This thing obviously hasn't been in use for a while. I'm also not sure how well the RAID controller backup battery is doing since that's a rechargeable lithium cell. So that's probably either going to be in protection or exploding if you put this thing into service. So that's a bit of a look at a first generation IBM System X3650 server. Sadly, it's a bit too old to be of much utility to me. 
and I'm frankly not sure what to do with it, but thanks to Martin for at least sending me something to make an excellent comeback video to tech and occupying my entire bench for a week. Now that I'm back home. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.